Hey folks, this is GreenyXI welcoming you right back to Let's Play Yuminiko. This is episode 83. In the last episode, we had a bit of an issue with Natsui having another phone call from her son, who is calling her son. And we also saw that the, the grown-ups, the adults, they got a letter. So, let's get cracking with that then. Uh, top bump. <laughs> and it made it to about, was it 3 o'clock? So, we're going to be... Must be getting close to the first twilight. Down as hard, hard as ever. This weather was supposed to continue all day tomorrow as well, which made me feel a bit depressed. Oh wait, given the time, I should say today, not tomorrow. But that doesn't really matter now. I'm sleepy now. Ah, oh, you sleepy. With half asleep eyes, I opened my umbrella. The large drops of rain pounded mercilessly against it. Technically, the end of the family conference had been declared at 1am, but external scuffles kept continuing sluggishly. I'm really jealous, jealous of Aunt Rosa, who managed to slip out of there at that time. She cleverly got away by saying that she'd check on Maria, who might have been staying up too late. Dad caught me, ruining my chance to escape, and they made me stick around until now, 3am. So what have they decided on after all this time? Nothing at all. They just kept on arguing about who said what, like elementary school kids. I'm sure they're tired too. That's probably why they keep dragging on with the same pointless questions. I no longer felt any shock or anger towards them. I guess drowsiness is the best painkiller. I left them behind and finally returned to the guest house. When I got back to the guest house, the first floor lounge was lit. I could even hear people chatting inside. Apparently some people were still awake even this late. Despite the late hour, Goda-san and Dr. Nanjo were still up and chatting. Plates and cups were lined up on the counter, and it looked almost like a bar with Goda-san as the bartender. When they noticed they had returned, they seemed to finally realise how late it was. When Goda-san made to top off Dr. Nanjo's glass, the latter declined with an exaggerated gesture. That's enough, that's enough. It's already too late to be up. Look how late it's gotten. You were such a good person to chat with, I hardly noticed. If so, it's all thanks to your liquor. We'll have to do this again sometime. Yes, gladly. Battler Sama, welcome back. Is the discussion with Krauss Sama and the others still continuing? From the way things were going, it looks like they were, might plod on until dawn. None of my business. I spoke carelessly with a big yawn. They have quite a lot of stamina. I'm surprised. Oh, so you're here too. With one thing and another, they ended up having a small night party here. And they let me join in. Don't worry, I haven't said a word about that. Erica could be seen on the sofa. She had taken her shoes off and was lounging around as though she owned the place. Erika Sam is very knowledgeable on a variety of subjects. I enjoyed listening to her immensely. Your knowledge truly is extensive. Very impressive for one so young. You're very welcome. I, food or Erika, know quite a bit about trifles such as this. Erika grabbed the corners of her skirt and posed. This was somewhat less than graceful, considering what she was lounging on the sofa with her feet up. Where's Aunt Rosa? She returned at 1am but she went straight upstairs to sleep. That's probably true. After taking part in that conference for so long, I feel like flopping down in bed right away myself. I've had it. I'm tired enough that I might flop over right here. Well then, let's call it a night. Don't you have to get up early tomorrow morning to make breakfast, Goda-san? Preparations for breakfast have already been made. I would be most pleased if you'd look forward to it. In Goda-san's eyes, the family conference is an open stage on which to display his culinary skills. Maybe this invigorates him so much that he doesn't even get sleepy. Erika stood up, laughing at how youthful Goda was. This became a sign that it was time to disperse. I will clean up here. Please go and sleep everyone. Leaving the clean up to Goda-san, I went to the bathroom and then climbed the stairs to the second floor. Good night, everyone. These old bones have stayed up a little too late. Good night, Dr. Nanjo. Good night, Battlesan. Yeah. Good night. Then in the second floor hallway, we split up. 
Dr. Nanjo went to his own room. Erica went to her room. And I returned to the cousin room. I couldn't hear any sounds of playing coming from our room. Could they have fallen asleep already? Already? <laughs> no surprise at this time of night. Exactly. If they were still playing, they would have been staying up way too late. When I opened the door quietly, as expected, the room was already pitch black except for a small night light. Everyone was already sleeping in their beds. I'm sure they all had a great time and played a ton. Then they probably talked about youthful things and enjoyed staying up late. If only I hadn't found the gold, I could have enjoyed my time with them. I'm already tired. So tired. Forgetting even to change my clothes or brush my teeth, I crawled into bed and immediately began to descend into the marshes of sleep. Ah, today's been so insane. I wonder if that old bastard's still in the family conference now. How does he not get tired? Come to think of it, what was it that old bastard said when we parted company? Tomorrow, there's something important I want to talk about as a family. It's about you. I'm sure it's more stuff about being the successor. I don't even want to hear about it. If I tell you about this, I'll probably be killed. I'll kill you whenever you want, you old bastard. And then, what was it he said next? It's about your birth. My birth? Probably just something about the noble Ashuramaya lineage. Not interested. Just let me sleep. Uh, what? I mean, oh, <laughs> the last, the last episode at the end of it, it couldn't have been a proper break, could it? Oh shit! <laughs> I messed up the format. <laughs> well, carry on then. <laughs> the sound of crashing waves. The sound of the tide surging. The noise of the sea breeze. Whenever my headache torments me, these are the sounds that fill my head. Unable to be a successor, I was in a very difficult position with regards to the Ashuramaya family. Whenever I heard of a drug or incense that could make you achieve pregnancy, I tried it. But nothing had any effect. Until I was blessed with Jessica 18 years ago, I was ashamed to even call myself a wife. Children are created by the efforts of two people and the whims of heaven. It's not fair to place all the blame on yourself. I still don't know what caused my inability to become pregnant. I even went to see noted physicians. I underwent humiliating examinations. But I was always just told that they didn't understand the reason. Even though quite some time had passed since your marriage, you still couldn't bear a child. I see. It's only natural that Eva, who secretly aspired to become the successor, would start getting ideas. Eva tried to convince father that I, I was a failure as the successor's wife. It was a time when Kinzo was also very disappointed by my husband's repeated business failures. On the other hand, Eva's husband Hideyoshi's business was growing well, completely the opposite of my husband's. He was the only person who could bring father good news. So perhaps father couldn't be blamed if he decided to lend an ear to Eva's words or even accept them completely. It was all my fault, because I couldn't bear a child. You are sinless. Aren't babies of this country carried here by storks? If anyone's to be judged, blame the stork. Thank you. However, even though he was still in good health then, the head was already well past his prime. And it's not hard to imagine that he wanted to see his grandchildren's faces as soon as possible. Who okay, cares? If he wanted a grandchild, he could have just done what he wanted with that appalling amount of money he had. This is Kinzo, the man who always bragged about how much money could create anything. If he wanted a grandchild, why couldn't he just manage something with that money he was so proud of? Yes, that's right. The head gave up on me when I couldn't bear a child. And did just that. The head gave to many charities, thinking it the duty of anyone in possession of so much money. One among these, an orphanage known as the F <laughs> careful you, Fukuin House, we'll, we'll go with that, <laughs> had, been given, had been given especially large donations, possibly because he had old ties with that place. Ah, the Fukuin House. Furniture came from that place quite often. To provide on-the-job training and preparation for life as a working adult. The head employed Fukuin house children with exceptional grades as servants. All of the servants in the mansion with On in their names 
such as Shannon, Cannon, Lunan, Manon, Liam, came from there. There were quite a lot of them, weren't there? The most quit after just a few years. That's probably because a few years of wages from working here would earn them more than enough to live on their own. Experience as a servant for the Ashurmaya family would be a wonderful thing to add to their resume. I'm sure it was the head's ambition that they would gain this for themselves and then spread their wings in society. I see. So an adopted child. Father, what did you just say? Accept this baby as my grandchild. Oh, there, there. There, there. Apparently the baby that Kumasawa was trying to soothe didn't like the study air at all. It kept on crying, upset. My apologies, father. What is it you just... Accept this baby as my grandchild, and raise it to be the one who succeeds Kraus. In other words, you want me to raise this baby as me and my husband's own child? That's right. It's clear now that you cannot bear children. There must be some sort of defect in your body. Ooh, there, there. There, there. As so though she couldn't hear our discussion in the slightest, Kumasawa kept on trying to cuddle the baby. This made it cry even louder. Is this the boy who's phoning Natsui? What nonsense. If all responsibility of giving birth to children rested with the woman, there'd be no need for men in the world. I've never forgotten the bitter pain I felt that day. It's not as though I didn't want a child. However, no matter how much I prayed, I couldn't get pregnant. Thinking that something to do with my body might be the cause, I went to see several famous doctors. But even so, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't become pregnant. And in the end, this was the result. I see. The baby had been picked up by the Fukuin house just recently. Of course, you couldn't help but feel compassion for this child, who was so young and who had already lost his parents' affection. However, it brought me nothing but pain and sadness. This, uh, it would have been another story if I had suffered to bear this child. But why should I be forced to hold this baby, who not only shared none of my blood, but who was not related to my husband in the slightest either? I don't hate father. If anything, I hated my own body. I detested it. I truly detested my own body for being unable to bear a child. So I prayed. I prayed to both angels and demons, and my wishes were granted by both. But what did you pray to angels? I prayed for a miracle in my body. If there was something wrong with my body, I could accept that. In that case, I wanted to overcome that defect and somehow be granted the miracle of being given my husband's child. That wish was granted. The next year, you gave birth to Jessica. And for what did you pray to demons? I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand it. I hated my body, so I hated this baby. Because... Hmm. Okay. What did you wish for? For the first time, I prayed and made wishes to demons. I wished that this baby would just disappear. It's Sui. <laughs> of course, that wish was also granted by demons. On that day, I left the baby with an older servant and went to think about the future in the Rose Garden. No, that's a lie. I didn't want to think about anything. The baby's cries were annoying. So I ordered the servant to take the baby to a place where I couldn't hear. By a place where I couldn't hear, I meant somewhere far away. Yes, I wished for it. I wished for the servant to take the baby far away and never return. I see. So a passing demon heard your wish, Natsui-sama. And then, what happened next? After that, there was a bizarre accident that could only have been granted me by a demon. The woodland path from the Rose Garden to the harbour is probably well suited for a comfortable walk. It must surely feel good to occasionally leave the path and walk through a grove of trees, depending on your mood. The other side. It was about 10 meters tall, I think. It was rocky below. There was also a fe- Was Lewis there, wasn't she? <laughs> 
And then, the servant and the baby. They died. They fell from the cliff, down to the rocks below. No, they did died because I wished it. That means this is... It isn't your fault. There's no need to think about it any further. But it happened because I wished it. No, that's wrong. Even if you wish for something, whether it comes true or not is decided by the whims of gods, demons, witches. You are sinless. Humans are sinless. You can even say that I killed them. No, I did kill them. I saw you mourning and felt pity, so I lured the servant with the baby to the cliff and guided them down it. Wasn't it just an unfortunate accident? If you can't accept it as an accident, blame it on us. That's why demons exist. That's right. We're here for your sake. It's not like you killed them. We killed them. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry I got a bit of a cold again. So you are sinless. So please, don't blame yourself, Natsui. Is that true? Am I truly sinless? Yeah, you are. Ha ha ha. Young one who claims revenge for the events of 19 years ago. If you're going to curse someone, curse me. However, witches have a patent on curses. Let me take on this fight you're trying to pick with Natsui. I am the Ashura Maya family alchemist, Beatrice the Golden. If I know one picks a fight with the master I serve, I'll fight in my master's stead. Revenge for 19 years ago, you say? I'll show you that such as hardly a blink of an eye for a witch who's lived a thousand years. So you hate Natsui for wishing your death 19 years ago? Let me make you remember just who it was that lured you off that cliff. As the middle-aged female servant cuddled the sobbing baby, she walked on a small path through the trees. Natsui had told her that the baby was too loud, so she had tried to get as far from the rose garden as she could. She was completely unaware as to why she'd gone out of her way to head into this direction. However, the sobbing baby suddenly stopped crying. Something was reflected in its eyes, but the servant couldn't tell what. However, thinking that the baby had stopped because it had taken an interest in something, she headed in the direction of the baby's gaze. The baby had seen a cloud of gold butterflies disappearing off into the trees. And on the other side of the trees, the servant could see a woman. Who? She didn't recognize this person, but it didn't look like anyone who was supposed to be here. The baby stopped crying and stayed in that direction. Then the servant's legs started to automatically carry her that way. Come this way, woman. Bring that cursed baby with you. Ah. The woman couldn't disobey. She was completely overwhelmed by Beto's gold glowing eyes. She walked lightly, as though through a dream world. At some point, the scenery surrounding her had changed. But she did not notice. She could not notice. Though this should have been Rokunjima, at some point it had become the garden of a mansion she had never seen before. It was a garden she had never set eyes on, even grander than the great rose garden of the Ashuramaya family, a garden of gold roses. There stood an arbour, and a woman wearing an elegant dress beckoning to her. There was a man who looked like a butler, and the tea he poured with a beautiful gesture had a very nice and enticing smell. It was as though they were telling her to join their tea party. She couldn't disobey. She had to go to the master of this golden rose garden and give this child as an offering. Forgive me, woman. Curse your bad luck for being entranced by a witch, and surrounded by these gold roses, which you would never be able to enjoy in this world. Sleep. Gap. Yes, understood. When Gap snapped her fingers, a pitch black hole opened at the woman's feet, and she was swallowed up along with the baby. The scene of the moment that followed must have burned itself into the eyes of the woman and the baby. The two floated in the air and looked down at the gold rose garden spread out below them. Below their feet was not the earth, but a golden rose garden that stretched as far as the eye could see, without any gaps. If one could have this scene imprinted in their minds as their last memory, that would be such a merciful way to die. Then, the woman and the baby were swallowed up by the golden sea. The thunk was remarkably plain and remarkably quiet for a sound that stole away two lives. 
However, it made for a perfectly suitable show at a tea party of witches. With the woman and the baby at the centre, the rose garden was slowly swallowed up by darkness. The sound of the wind grew stronger bit by bit. Is that TV static? What is that noise? It was the roar of the sea. The two who had fallen into the thicket of golden roses from that great height and died were gradually wrapped up in the roar of the sea, wrapped up in the scenery of the beach below the cliff. I guarantee it. You're completely sinless. I'll accept this revenge from 19 years ago. Eek! When I spotted the two of them on the rocks below, I went pale. Then I dashed back to the mansion, and there was a huge uproar. They took them to a hospital in a boat as soon as possible, but from that night, uh, from that height, it was a miracle that they had even avoided an instant death. Both the servant and the baby died. In less than three days from the, fa the time father had entrusted me with the baby, I had killed it. My husband had been on a business trip. Rosa San, who had still lived on the island at the time, had been travelling with her friends. Father and I were the only ones on Wakanjima. And before anyone except Father and I really knew anything, a baby had appeared out of nowhere and then disappeared again. That's right, it was a dream. A nightmare! I was sure the Father would blame me. However, he seemed somehow strange. <laughs> oh, I saw this coming. I knew this would happen. How long will you struggle? How long will it be before you're mine? I have no interest in an empty cage. Throw it away. My father learned of the accidental death. He kept on laughing and laughing, as though there could be no greater pleasure. Enough that just listening to it gave me a creepy feeling. Perhaps something had come loose in his mind. From that day onwards, father shut himself up inside the world of the occult even more than he ever had before. When my husband came back, he was surprised to see that father was even more bizarre than he had been before. However, he had already accepted that this would happen sooner or later. Of course, my husband had heard about the baby. However, he told me that it was surely just some whim of father's and to forget it. So I forgot it. It was an unfortunate accident. No, it wasn't an accident at all. I forgot everything, even that the baby had existed in the first place. After all, it was a twisted nightmare that lasted not even three days. That's right, it was all a nightmare. I don't want to remember. The cliff, the broken fence, the roar of the sea, and the cry of the baby. So this baby, is the baby from 19 years ago? Of course not. I killed that baby. It no longer exists in this world. However, there's no red truth in the human world. Nothing can be trusted there. That's right. Beetle definitely killed that baby. However, you might find out that it's alive in the world of humans. Whether it's really alive or not, right? Do you mean to say that it actually survived? After falling to the rocks from that height? I don't know, but calm down. No matter how much this person hates you, it was an accident, and that's the truth. If he does hate you, his hatred is completely unjustified. But, but, even if I didn't lay a finger on him, inside my heart, I... Calm down. No matter who the man from 19 years ago hates or what he yells at you, there's no way the sin he's after actually occurred. So calm down. Why don't I welcome the man from 19 years ago as my guest? Just when the riddle was solved and I thought my job was finished, I've got to entertain this final guest of mine. Ooh, is he going to show him? This begins to grow more interesting. Not only are you protecting Lord Goldsmith's secret, but you also have a 19th guest, as well as a man from 19 years ago. True, since we claim that Kinzo is alive, Erica is the 19th person. And besides that 19th person, we also have a man from 19 years ago. How interesting, I'm getting all fired up. We have no lack of opponents, and I was just lamenting the fact that I had but one guest in my tea party. Come you fools. Frudo Erica is Lady Burncastle's piece. In that case, whose piece is the man from 19 years ago? Who's could it be? The voice faintly seeping from the other end of the line was Natsui's. I understand. I'll go to sleep right now. I'll ask back to her. I won't leave my room and I won't pick up the phone. So don't involve my husband and daughter. 
Even this begging scream, which would shake the heart of any listener, could be listened to with a cold ruthlessness through the end of the receiver. As long as you follow my orders, I'll keep your secret, mother. Do not disobey me. I am already very close by to you. I can easily tell whether you have turned your lights off or whether you are on the phone. If I wished to, I could even kiss your sleeping face. I'll keep it. I'll keep my promise. So stop it. Just stop it. Stop it. The receiver was slammed down. He knew very well that the way you hang up a phone can leave a nasty aftertaste for the other side. Okay, good night, mother. <laughs> and there you have it. Now Natsui won't come out for her room tonight. That's pretty handy. You can change your voice. <laughs> Anyone can change their voice. A sweet voice when coaxing Papa. A sick sounding voice when taking the day off school. An apo apologetic voice when turning down a friend that you actually hate. If you want, I can do any kind of voice at all. Got it? You should stop being a witch and become a voice actress. <laughs> so, all the pieces set up on both sides now? Frodo, Erica, what a wonderful piece. She's a much more suitable piece for you than Angie was, Burn. Your praise honours me, Lady Lambda Delta. The pleasure is mine. She really is wonderful. Truly cute. I'd like to make your surrender to the illusion of the witch and see her face twist in humiliation. Hear that? Don't embarrass me, okay? Prove yourself to be a much more useful piece than Angie was. Yes, leave it to me. Lady Bencastle, my master. I'm nothing like that gloomy, dull-witted, totally uncute piece. Hmm. She's right. That Angie didn't do anything useful except get turned into meat chunks to egg battle on. I have absolutely no interest in family love or sibling love. The game we want to see is more gruesome and sticky. A grotesque, pop and cute murder case. If Natsui is the king, then I wonder if that makes Beto the queen. <laughs> the pack of witches and furniture guarding Natsui is less like a set of chess pieces and more like... Bowling pins, right? <laughs> Natsui and Beto, Kinzo and delusions of the worthless future, uh, furniture. Entertain us a bit, will ya? Especially you, Bido. We're already bored of you. This Legend of the Witch Murders game of yours is over already. Your time is over and done with. This game board already belongs to Burn and me. It'll suit you to be reduced to one of your pieces and toyed with for all eternity. <laughs> Both Natsui and Bido are like the guts of a filthy truth wrapped up in a bit of thin skin. Tearing that to bits and dragging the insides out is one of my... No, one of our few pleasures. Yep, you can have tons of fun with it. Hey, you watching Beatrice? Look at how much fun can be had playing with the game board. Let me show you. This fifth game's really gonna be fun. Poor Beto. It's a bit sad if we're the only ones having a pleasant chat. Why didn't you let Beto talk too? Hear that? I'll give you special permission to talk. What do you hope to gain from this latest game? Ah, she said nothing. That's right, that's right. You're the loser who surrendered to battler. Leave it to me, okay? I'll put the witch side on top right away. But that means I'll have to sacrifice your piece. The epitaph has been easily solved before the first twilight, and Beatrice, the keeper of the gold, has lost face. <laughs> Isn't it great that you remain as a piece, as part of Natsui's illusion? Well, we're treating you as a pin now instead of a piece, okay? The golden witch Beatrice is out of the picture now. You and your furniture have only a minuscule role in my game, a loser's role. Resign yourself to getting blasted away and becoming Burns and my toy. If you don't like that, why not just tell us to stop? If you do, we'll stop. She's saying she doesn't mind. <laughs> You're totally a pin. <laughs> oh god. There's no need for a golden witch anymore. All that's needed is a sacrificial doll, so the two witches can enjoy some time playing. Die, die, disappear. Confess to your filthy past and your crimes. Speak out your sob story of regret and repentance as you throw yourself off a cliff and die. The Golden Witch will never again have her turn.
be dope. This will probably turn out to be a nasty game. On the surface, it looks very similar to the usual tales. However, there's no respect given to the true main character of this story. This tale was supposed to be one that the Golden Witch Beatrice invited Ishuramaya Battler to see. However, the host has been lost, and there are no longer any guests. The one who did the inviting, and the one who was invited, are no longer around in this horrible tale. Welcome to the fifth game. End of the Golden Witch. Welcome to the banquet without the guest of honour, hijacked by the evil witches. Ready, Battler? The second day is finally about to start. <laughs> Just like Beto, I hate slow story progression. Just do what you want. No matter how much you mess things up, I'll definitely reach the truth of this game. <laughs> it has to be that way. You've got to fight for your little sister's sake as well. Don't worry. Lady Lambda Delta is a far more terrifying opponent than that fool Beatrice, but I'll be giving you plenty of support, so there won't be any problems. Together with me, why don't you finally expose the illusion of the witch this time? I don't give a damn about you. I won't acknowledge anything that didn't exist in Beto's games, so I don't need you. Is now really the time to act tough? No, oh, well, let's both give it our all, okay? Together, let's tear this illusion of the witch apart. Erica offered me her hand to shake. Instead of just passively ignoring this, I gave her proactive and clear answer by knocking her hand aside. <laughs> Looks like he hates shaking hands, just like Angie. Don't worry, I'm a far more useful piece than Angie. I'm nothing at all like shredded meat that couldn't do anything but restore your fighting spirit. Isn't it great that you've been blessed with such a helpful looking ally? In the past it was Virgilia and Ronave. Then Angie came as well. And now you have Burn and Erica. There's so many pieces supporting you. So how does it feel, knowing that you still can't catch on to the truth despite that? How does it feel? It doesn't matter. This battle is between me and Beto. Everyone else besides us doesn't matter. Oh, is that true? You're finally standing on your own. You've always had someone helping you, someone sympathetic to you. So I wonder just how far you'll get on your own. Entertain me. I'll grab it and take it back. This is our game. You two aren't wanted here. Yes, that's true. This is your game. So try taking it back. Let's see how far someone like you, who couldn't even win, beat those games when she went easy on you all over the place, can get in Lambda Delta's uh, completely ruthless game without any help. Well then, wake up, assure my battler. Welcome to the morning of October 5th. There it is. I thought it was coming. <laughs> it felt like it was building up there. So it's going to start at 7 o'clock. Oh, I, I'm actually pretty excited to see where they go with this one. I can't remember this arc very well. And it's the last arc I actually read, so... I don't know where it's going to go. The second day, October 5th, 1986. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to end it off there. This has been Greeny XI. Hope you've enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again in a bit when we head on into the second day. See you in a bit, folks. <laughs>